Welcome to our 14th series, everyone. This series, we tackle a game that's been on our list from the beginning, Shadowrun, with none other than the folks from the Neoscum podcast. But before we get into the episode, we have our usual announcements. Yeah, first up, if you listened to our last episode, the Character Evolution cast episode about romance, uh, you would know that we announced uh, in the cold open an art contest. Uh, we'll link to the Twitter thread explaining things more in the show notes, but the main points are that the previous iteration of the contest is no longer applicable. Uh, so we'll not be giving away prizes for fan art uh, because it was pointed out that this is akin to asking for free art and is therefore not fair to the artists. And we here at Character Creation Cast are big proponents of treating people fairly and trying to give people their due uh, for the work that they do. So, um, as is the case, we've altered the contest. So for now, please tell us on Twitter, discord, or Facebook, who your favorite character is of all the characters that we've made on this podcast. The character that gets the most votes will be commissioned into existence by a marginalized artist. We're not sure which artist yet, but we'd love to hear your thoughts. So let us know about some of your, your some of your favorite marginalized artists and we'll share them on our Twitter page as well as keep them in mind for our drawing. And I want to add too that even outside of this contest and fan art and everything, um, we love hearing from you. Um, and you know the thing that I'm dying for, Ryan, is What's for that? for fanfic. Um, so if you are like bored and want to write some fanfic about these characters, <laughs> dude, send it our way. Yeah. Like, I mean, I feel pretty good about asking for that. I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like for real, just, you know, like send me your coffee shop AU of, um, of Aspire Death Priest, I guess. <laughs> I'm here for it. Or and or any of our star-crossed pairings. Oh my god, I would read the crap out of that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're fans of fanfic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so in addition to all of that, um asking you to do things further, we are looking for questions for everyone so that we can answer them in an upcoming Q&A episode. We are coming up on our anniversary. And we want to do something special and take some questions from all of you. So we have a Google form that you can fill out so that we can keep all of the questions organized and everything. We'll put a link to that in our show notes. But you can ask us about character creation, about player advice, about us personally, about making a podcast, really about pretty much anything. Uh, if you want to ask us about astrophysics. I don't know anything about it, but you are more than welcome to ask and I'll make something up. So if you could please <laughs> submit stuff through the form, uh, we really want to have lots of different and interesting questions from a lot of different people. And I think the more questions we have, the better conversation we can have and the better episode mm -hmm. that we can put out. So we would love to hear from you. Like I said, we'll put a link to the Google form in our show notes. We also have it linked on our Twitter. I think it's the pinned tweet right now still. Um, so please take a look at that, submit your questions about whatever, um, and we will answer them in an upcoming episode mm -hmm. to the best of our ability. <laughs> if you don't want to ask us about astrophysics and you just want to tell us how we're doing, uh, go ahead and re leave a rating and review on various platforms like Apple podcasts, Stitcher, uh, pod chaser, which is a relatively new one, uh, or even our Facebook page. Um, and you can have a wonderful review read on air like this one from Astro Knitter, who wrote a review on Stitcher titled A Great Way to Expand Your RPG Knowledge. They said, This show is truly a delight. The hosts are cheerful, the guests are knowledgeable, and the variety of games explored is impressive. This podcast has also led me to multiple excellent actual play podcasts, which means its influence has gone beyond just its own episodes. On top of all of that, 
They even have episodes focused on how to improve your gameplay as a player. In short, if you enjoy RPGs in any capacity, this show will definitely have something for you to enjoy. Well, thank you so much, Astro Knitter. That was so nice. Yeah. I, I, I think I've said it lots of times, but I love to hear from people that they found other shows through our show. Like, it makes me so happy because I think that there's mm-hmm. so many good podcasts out there and, like, so many people doing and making really great stuff in mm-hmm. RPGs. And, like, I love that we have the ability to help other people find more stuff. It's, ugh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> it makes me super happy as well. <laughs> With all of that out of the way, here's the episode. Enjoy. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and this episode, my co-host Ryan and I welcome Eleni, Blair, Mike, and Casey of the Neo Scum Podcast. We are here to discuss character creation for Shadowrun, a cyberpunk role-playing game system by Catalyst Game Labs. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, everyone. We're really excited you could join us. Thank you. Thank you. you. I know we're acting like we just started, but we've been warming up and joking back and forth. So I think we're ready to... (laughs) We're all friends here. We're all friends here now, and it's... Everything's good. We're ready to friggin' make some characters. Yeah. We've, uh, we've... Got some really great outtakes so far, so I'm excited. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, Neo Scum as a cast is probably better at coming up with B-roll and outtakes. Yeah. Yeah. Neo Scum is just that that like school project where you're supposed to make a video and it just ended up being like a 15 second video with like seven minutes of just like bloopers that are not super yeah. funny, <laughs> but like everyone's like, look at that every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I saw Casey's tweets about the clip show too, about like oh, trying to find all of the Yeah, I mean it's 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 brutal in a good way, but uh it's it's really uh it's it's tough to to find the the best of the bunch when we just we go so fast and like it I'll literally have like there were like moments I had like a half hour long clip and I'd be like, Okay, how do I get six minutes out of this? We like also- <laughs> the best six minutes from this. We also had like a document of you know, we would listen to episodes and then mm-hmm. mark timestamps of what we thought were the best moments. But then some of them would be like, okay, minute one, minute three, minute five, yeah. minute eight. <laughs> and then it would just be like every two you know, like, minutes. Minute 10 through minute 25. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then hand Casey just like a list of like 200 different points. It's like, yeah, pull all of this audio, listen to it. Well, and then I'd listen early. to something and be like, oh, this moment needs context. So I have to go back and I have to find some context <laughs> and cut that. Anyway, we won't get into it. It's difficult. It's difficult, <laughs> but it's we, we, we love it. It's because it's good. It's yeah. not a podcast creation cast. Yeah. Character <laughs> creation cast. Yeah, That's right. We're the characters. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. All right. Well, let's start by introducing all of you to our audience. Eleni, can you tell us a bit more about yourself and any other projects that you are currently involved in? Oh, hello. My name is Eleni Sobisho. Um, I am from Chicago. I'm an improviser, an actor. Um, other projects that I'm working on right now besides Neo Scum, I stream with Mike. Uh, the channel is on twitch.tv it's mike lenny um and i'm the mother of two cats so good stuff yeah. <laughs> that's a project that's a bad as a project yeah. they don't get along two sometimes projects, yeah. you know <laughs> and blair what about yourself um also an improviser in chicago i do comedy um i uh other projects i'm involved in beyond neo scum uh i also help out with the crowd theater it's a nonprofit improv theater in chicago um originally from colorado and i have majored in science Ooh. You, <laughs> you're you're uh, you don't use it directly, but let me tell you, man. Oh, you use a lot of his, indirect use. Yeah, of his scientific <laughs> brain is a wonder and uh, to play with. And he's constantly whipping with. up little 
alchemical concoctions and but, throwing them in my face. Yeah, it's I real got, Jim I got a lab in my apartment. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Speaking of lab, I'm sorry. Back to me for a second. I'm also, <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm, a Lenny, by the way. <laughs> I, this is a Lenny again. I'm also a company member of the theater company, the Runaways Lab Theater, mm. and I yeah. can't believe that I missed saying that because we are so very cool. Um, check us out. <laughs> very nice. I was going to say, uh, or, like, I don't know how you feel about segues. I got a segue from that. If you, <laughs> if you want it, like, it. open the door for it. Yeah, go for it. Um, I just, uh, one of my extra projects is. What's, what's your name? Uh, my you? name is Casey. Okay. Awesome. Tony. Great to meet you, buddy. C-A-S-E-Y, T-O-N-E-Y. Hi, Casey. Hi, hello. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, Eleni was talking about the Runaways. I just, you could check them out at the website. I just, uh, just literally finished building that at. Uh, uh, 4.30 a.m. and then uh, on a half hour of my lunch break this morning. And uh, But yeah, obviously also uh, improviser and and, uh, performer in the city. Uh, I also recently started doing some streams uh, of doing a series where I play through Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and 3. And I I love the first Kingdom Hearts and I uh, do not love the second. And I imagine I will have very uh, conflicting feelings about the third. And we're having fun. (laughs) It's uh, twitch.tv slash Casey Pony, P O N E Y. Series is called Fall of a Kingdom. So nice. keep an eye out for that. We're going to be creating some characters uh, in, in the chat, maybe. No. <laughs> that was just luck. That was a stretch. I, <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of uh, segues, uh, speaking of stretching, uh, uh, my name is Mike Migdahl. Um, I, I like to stretch in the morning and at night before going to bed and when I wake up. He makes uh, me do it. It's one of those old medieval racks. Yeah, I put Casey on the uh, the old oh. stretcher. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> I put him in the Iron Maiden, baby. Uh, uh, my name's Mike Migdahl. I put Casey in a torture device. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, I, this, I, this is recorded. Yeah, oh, it's, oh, it's, yeah. Recorded. it's recorded. and You can find it on the dark it's web. Too. <laughs> it's, it's true. I'm not going to curse, but I will say uh, scandalous things. <laughs> Um, I stream with the Lenny at twitch.tv. It's Mike Lenny time. Um, we have a nice uh, chat there called The Family. Um, we love The Family. We love The Family. It's, it's a nice place to hang out. That's what I like about streaming is that it's just hanging out. Yeah. You know, it's just the evolution of going to your friend's house and watching them play video games. Um, but back to me, I also, uh, I'm trying to write more, I'm trying to get into uh, uh, writing sci-fi fantasy like short stories before writing like a, a novel or something. Blair also has taken a, a writing class. We both have taken writing classes in the past like four months. Not to out you. Oh no. Actually mine hasn't started yet, so I can't quite claim that yet. Mine starts it next starts Monday. Tonight Dude, with yeah, this creation tonight. Cat. I thought you meant your uh, your introduction and I was like, we did it. No yeah, I have a second introduction written. <laughs> Blair, Blair, I think that by the time that this comes out you will have started Oh. Maybe you can finish your class. You're so, right, yeah. Uh-huh. So Future Blair is a published short story fiction writer. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but <laughs> We're very proud of him. Yeah, Thank well, you. I'm excited too. <laughs> Mike is not. <laughs> no, I, I want to no, be yeah, in an anthology will, with you of people that uh, are friends in real life and also, I guess, write genre fiction. <laughs> but um, I like to read books. And Mike also helps uh, edit uh, edits the, the guiding episodes of our show. Uh, I forgot to mention that. I, I edit the show and, and Mike edits and... We got just a we got just a bunch of cool stuff going on as a as a group and as individuals. Yeah, I got an edit to do tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> Thinking about that edit. Thinking about how I don't feel like doing it. But <laughs> you got to because Patreon, you know, the Patreon backers need it. Mm-hmm. It's good content. They do. <laughs> that's nail scum. Yeah. That's the podcast that's, that's life. Us. I have a brother. <laughs> His name is Jacob. Yeah, guys, we'll just keep going until you stop. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and actually get this started. Yes. Um, we're going to start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? We are going to start with the setting. What is the setting of Shadowrun? Shadowrun is, um, like, I think the way we always describe it is, like, it's Blade Runner with, like, orcs and Tolkien-esque creatures. Um, in, in our version of Shadowrun, uh, it's a little different. Just to be clear, like we use the Shadowrun rule books and stuff, but we are very open to kind of like creating our own uh, lore Variant and stuff. And yeah. we don't really go by the official Shadowrun lore. Um, Ganon, our GM, who's not here, 
uh, I think takes a lot of pride in pulling from pop culture and, and things that he likes. And because we all do improv, um, Gannon as a GM is kind of forgiving and generous when it comes to us establishing things about the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, we kind of create, we have a lot of leeway into, uh, like creating our own setting. So it's Blade Runner with orcs meets like all of the things that we like. <laughs> and I feel like with, a, uh, with like an eighties and Americana and kind of like post ironic uh, filter applied. I feel like you're getting like a f- flavor of that on everything. I would also say uh, in in Shadowrun, there's kind of like so it's all like sort of like a cyberpunk dystopia mm-hmm. added with like magic and the awakening and like elves mm-hmm. and dragons and stuff. But within Shadowrun, there's that dichotomy of uh, black trench coat and then pink mohawk. And so black trench coat is like the Matrix. Like you got your mirror shades, black trench coats. And People then, taking it very seriously. Yeah, like, and, and then pink mohawk is like, you know, the crazy kind of like Mad Max style, uh, like mm-hmm. cyberpunk dystopia. Poison lipstick. Yeah. Like the and, uh, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and which is like, literally a thing you can have. Uh, and, that's, yeah, and that's the, the thing about Neoscom in particular is that we are like probably the – example of like hardcore pink mohawk shadow run because we just it's like all ludicrous it's all ridiculous like if stuff can be over the top we make it even more over the top i think we're i Mm -hmm. think it's reasonable to say uh we are not the the favorite podcast of fans of shadow run if you really really love shadow run you will kind of maybe like there's definitely people who love shadow run who also also love our podcast but they have to they have admittedly like said that they have to sort of suspend a little bit of the of that sort of love of rules yeah i guess and and like the the lore and stuff and what's interesting to me is that to take like shadow run the shadow run lore and kind of the spirit behind shadow run as like sort of a holy you know document is (laughs) to me it feels a little ironic just because shadow run is completely ripped off of like the 80s cyberpunk fiction of like it's William a Gibson who stole it from stuff. somebody else. And it's all, everyone is just sort of like hacking this lore and making it their own, which it's, it's its own way. It's like a pretty cyberpunk thing. So if you have an issue with us making <laughs> Shadowrun our own individual thing, that's like a weird bastardization of what it was supposed to be. That is Shadowrun. That is cyberpunk. That's how it was uh-huh. made. Like, honestly. Yeah. So at least respect the technique. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that uh, the people who, who just couldn't uh, listen to our show before or respect it uh, sat through all of this <laughs> episode of Creation Cast, and we finally changed their minds. Also, <laughs> also we're starting this so defensively. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's because I think we know how ridiculous our characters are going to be, and we, we're just bracing your audience for... Uh, if you came that. here to hear about like how Shadowrun is quote unquote supposed to be played, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll try. We'll do our best. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think people who have listened to our show know better than to expect that from us though, because oh, like, great. we Thank have not us. been, yes. yeah, we're not super nice to our games always. Sometimes. <laughs> that, <laughs> not always. We love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so what sort of things do we need to actually play this game? I hear there's a lot of D6s involved. Yeah, it's yeah. all pretty much all D6s, unless your GM has, uh, you know, something that they specifically created that you needed, like a D20 for or whatever. But you roll a series of either you hit or you miss. So fives and sixes are hits, and then anything else is a miss. There's also, I don't know how much you want me to get into what the dice mean. That's even just like the mechanics of the game. But like in terms of what you actually need to play the game, it's pretty much just like you need uh, the handbook or whatever and a character sheet and as many six-sided die dice as you can possibly find. Uh, And your imagination. And you you need patient, very patient friends. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's it still a lot takes of takes a long time. Yeah, there's a lot of number years. crunching and yeah. stuff. And you know what? Even the book, like <laughs> Shadowrun gets a lot for a lot of reasons. And uh, rightfully and, so. Yeah, rightfully so. Rightfully but like so. The, end of sentence. The the book <laughs> that you need to just play Shadowrun has like it it just has like incorrectly indexed yeah, things like, and like typos. broken. Yeah. And but it has like it Lots of flavor stories throughout it. Like, uh, hey, just give you an idea of what the world's like. It's like, hey, just tell me how to, to walk down the street. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, another joke I always hear about this one is that there's rules for treading water. And yeah. like nobody needs that. Nobody needs mm-hmm. that. There there are like specific rules for like so many different things. It'll and yeah, be- there's like if you want to run, you have to roll dice to like see how like how many meters you are running in a given combat. Right. Situation. You have to make sure that oh, you wow. load your gun before you aim your gun and then you shoot your gun and you then the it recoil depends. And right you your recoil, recoil. You, it, there's oh, literally no, rules for rolls. all of that and like if you throw a grenade you're like making like four rolls and maybe someone's gonna be like you only make three rolls but like you throw the grenade and then one of the rolls is like to determine how the grenade bounces like which cardinal which? direction it goes afterwards and for a podcast where we don't really play with like a uh, grid or have like too much visual representation. We're like doing theater of the mind, that kind of thing. We have to just leave to, to Gannon's uh, discretion. Yeah, I, I feel like honestly, like I guess all of this is to say, I think the the best way to enjoy Shadowrun, and this is good for even creating character, is like both narratively and mechanically to kind of just take what you like. And, uh, and just if something is like, oh, I don't really like that, just change it, you know, like it, it, Mm -hmm. it's the nature of it. So the crunchiness of the old Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games have not prepared me for the crunchiness of Shadowrun the RPG. No. <laughs> Unfortunately well, not. So the thing, no I mean, we use we also use Hero Lab, which is like a super, super helpful. Essential, because yeah, it, like, yeah, basically, like at this point, it has become essential because trying to create the character just from the rules and the amount of, I remember creating my character and the amount of flipping back and forth that I had to do between pages or PDF files or whatever was so much. I got incredibly overwhelmed and then it turned out I actually did everything like really wrong. And I made a really weak character that should have been maybe like four times stronger than she was. And once we like redid it in Hero Lab, I was like, oh my God, I Because every time I was rolling like four dice and it was like everyone was rolling 18 dice. And I was like, what's going on? Why am I so weak? But yeah, it's it's really hard. The math can get really tricky. And then, you know, it'll say if you have certain traits, this goes up. But it's it's all incredibly nuanced and keeping track of all that's really, really hard. So the software has helped a lot. Hero Lab is very helpful. Uh, But to speak on the the like the video games shadow runs of like Sega and Super Nintendo, I actually don't know how number crunchy that was. I assume it's not as number crunchy as a tabletop role playing game, but no. was it crunchy? It well, there was a lot of like you could optimize uh, through different cybernetics that you could get to give you se- yourself bonuses and different stats in order to have better percentages of accuracy and all that sort of stuff. Oh, cool, cool! I think your standard kind of uh, classic yeah. RPG. But yeah. yet it's doing the math for you, which is like exactly what Shadowrun like forces you to do. Just so many formulas per yeah. action. Yeah, I mean, I always explain this game as like rolling a bathtub full of dice, too. You just, I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's something that feels really good about just like having that many dice in your hands, like as a tactile person. Like that was my favorite thing about playing Shadowrun was just like, here, let me grab these 45 dice and I will roll them. <laughs> Yeah, make, like, a pretty strong sound. character. Yeah. yeah, forty-five dice. Woo! That's pretty good. Well, I feel they, like the most we've had someone roll was like 30, thirty-six. Maybe? For, thirty-six uh, for rolling for um, the body of Xanadu, right? Our truck, uh, like our truck, running yes. someone over or something. Yeah. Or, or yeah, how much uh, Ron's, damage did the truck? Ron's strength was super high too. Yeah, like a lot of uh, do something. a lot of guest characters ended up being way stronger than we are. I think everything is just tanked into like one stat. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, that's maybe, true. Like, when I built Stephen Kropa's character, I was like, I'm just going to give you like 25 strength. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like literally just dumping all of his stuff into one stat. Yeah. So let's move on to what you do when you play this game. What are characters' roles in Shadowrun? So um, it, it's kind of interesting because uh, despite all of the uh, like ludicrous specificity of this game, it also really does allow you to like do whatever you want. Um, to a large extent, you like in D and D, you have to like pick classes and like kind of even if you want to like super customize something, you are still probably orbiting within like a pretty linear like track. You might have a bunch of different options within it, but you can't truly like customize it. Whereas with Shadowrun, it's literally like uh, you know what sort of things do you want to be good at when you're when you're in combat? Do you want to use magic? Do you want to use you know guns? Do you want to use melee weapons? Uh, and then outside of that, it's like 
you know, how do you want to interact with the world? Do you want to be a, somebody who can like easily talk to anybody they run into, or do you want to be able to like hack into devices or, and even, even in that, it's like, how do you want to hack into devices? Do you want to have a computer in your head that hacks devices? Or do you want to be able to magically hack into devices that are around you? I think also traditionally, I mean, there's the, the Mr. Johnson in Shadowrun, which is like the, what's Mr. Johnson? The like, like the go right, between, yeah. between mm -hmm. uh, the Shadowrunner and like bigger entities. And so that's yeah. a, like a pretty, that's like the main... It's like quest, I guess, yeah. that that's there would always be the Mr. Johnson who like gives you the idea of the quest um, that you would go on. Yeah, I, like I, the, the idea behind Shadowrun is you're doing runs. So oftentimes you are doing like single objectives that can typically be completed within like one session. And just to give some like uh, context, I think what your character, like the thing that would probably be the same between our version of Shadowrun and like a very black trench coat version of Shadowrun is that in both of these worlds, there are huge corporations mm -hmm. and like these, the characters that you create for the most part, you're creating characters who exist like in the cracks of the society mm -hmm. yeah. that exists in this like future dystopia. So your character is like bottom line, probably trying to at least survive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. your character has something that they're really good at that they can like do as a service for either a corporation or a, like a crime entity and you're like doing these jobs. And uh, one thing I like about Shadowrun is that it for character creation, which we'll probably get into, there's like different types of runners that you can make where like you can make someone who's like living on the street or you can make someone who's like overpowered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh so it's just different, like, scales of difficulty. Or, yeah, you can mm -hmm. be, like, uh, you know, Joe the Plumber, who all of a sudden one day, like, is like, I'm going to be a shadow runner, and he, like, runs off yeah. and doesn't have all that many skills. Or you can play somebody who's, like, has been a shadow runner for their entire life and is now, like, you know, at the top of their game. Yeah, they're already getting, like, their monthly rent and all that stuff. <laughs> Joe the Plumber yeah. is the guy from that uh, political debate, right? Yeah, also from Toledo, Ohio, my birthplace. And now he's a shadow runner. Amazing. Now he's a shadow runner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Working for the corporation, so uh, yeah. and against the common. He man. was a small ah, business owner, from though, the right? Inside. That's yeah, and a down. Down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you're pretty much all. I would say you're all mercenaries, or at least for the most mm -hmm. part. In in most cases, you are like being paid to like do missions. Right. Essentially. Yes. So that's kind of like the basic concept. Yeah. And it's typical cyberpunk sort of thing: fight the corporate power and all that sort of stuff. I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're getting paid by one corporation to go steal stuff from another corporation. I, I mm -hmm. have seen people play Shadowrun as the, like, police. There are, like, I think you you can make essentially, like, a cop character. And then just, like, how in, like, Dungeons & Dragons you can probably play as, like, skeleton. Uh, <laughs> or some, or some, or like... I have seen people subvert it and do the opposite. Yeah, yeah you can totally, flip oh, yeah, the yeah. script and do it from the... Uh, yeah, totally. That sounds cool. Because, like, no matter who you play, I think a big element of Shadowrun is, like, no matter how powerful you are, it's like, hey, don't forget that, like, you could be, like, a god and you're still smaller than the systems that, like, have totally just, like, completely, like... And you know, entrench themselves into the world. Yeah, like yeah. you are so small compared to the powers. Unless that, you're a dragon yeah. or something, and then like you can come in and become a CEO or something. I know the official Shadowrun lore. I know more than I care to, but <laughs> <laughs> I got to say the the old uh, games for the Super Nintendo and Genesis had a ton of wonderful lore in it. So uh, yeah, the lore. That's where that's where my uh, knowledge typically comes from about Shadowrun and why I love the system so much, but I've never played or created characters for it. Yeah, I think that a lot of people share that too and have like such a love for the lore because it is a very rich, you know, the the stories and everything that's built around it is very rich and very expansive. I mean, there's tons of books and there's tons of um, like every single country has its own history and all that all that kind of stuff, which I think is super, super cool. I, mm -hmm. I But we do kind of just build our own because we can't you know, be expected to yeah. kind of do research like our podcast is like a role playing podcast and like an improv comedy podcast not yeah, like there's no right or wrong way yeah, we're, 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 we're not mm -hmm. trying to do research on like the back like the 20 years of Shadowrun's history and then just 
like regurgitate that for people. We're trying to do our own take on it, but yeah. It's I'll, like we're doing a genre, like improv piece. Oh, you know? for like, sure. Like for you, sure. Wouldn't, you wouldn't do like improvised, you know, historical fiction and then like only say stuff that is 100% yeah, accurate. Yeah, adhere to you know? like. Because like, you would just have to be like, well, like, Dad, well, Taft never said that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now, we, we got to make this like at least, you know, fluid enough that we can actually articulate well, it. But I think, and, and it, like, it, it, it's biased, obviously, but like, I, I feel like, honestly, one of the, some, a lot of my favorite elements. Uh, of the lore that like we of Shadowrun are like ones that like we like created naturally is like an offhanded thing. Like there's like this, like even like uh, Mike at one point uh, mentioned like uh, like a giga giant uh, like beaching on the shore of uh, Myrtle Beach. Uh, and and like now giga giants have been in the show and in the guidance like multiple times. And like Ganon made uh, Denver, Colorado into like this Kowloon walled city that like is not in the lore. It's just like th- the thing is, it's like that's what I think is like fun about it is is Shadowrun basically presents th- an opening for any possibility. And if you're if you're adhering too strongly to what they've established, it almost in a way, I feel like betrays the original spirit of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, I, I really like that you can take it in pretty much any direction you choose uh, because the the term cyberpunk is really um, inclusive of a lot of different types of stories that can be told. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah totally. which is really cool. Um, so what is uh, what would you say is unique about the system or the most unique thing about Shadowrun? I think in character creation, one thing that I really like that I'm sure we'll probably talk a lot about is that your character has like, you can, you can take positive traits and you can take negative traits. And like, uh, these, these traits give you attribute points or take away attribute points that you can spend on other things. Um, but I, I think the way that they encourage you to make a flawed character, uh, right from the get go is it, it just like forces you to make a more interesting character rather than just try to make a character that's like overpowered and or like mm-hmm. one note where it's like, okay, my character is like a really good hacker, but I also am like, I have horrible ADHD. Mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. horrible ADHD. I'm not a good hacker. <laughs> <laughs> For what my positive trait is. Yeah. I, think, I think like you kind of nailed it is like that idea of like being able to, uh, especially like as a role playing game, the, uh, the thing I really enjoy is that it gives you so many easy options to just be like, oh, like literally is mechanically incentivizing you to take negative traits so that you can get more points to spend on like positive attributes. And mm-hmm. just that aspect is like, oh, I was just going to play this person as like a straight up and down character. But now it's like, oh, my, you know, my character is like headstrong or like my character is like, uh, you know, like forgetful or something. And it just like it gives you that much more information to like put into a character and the fact that it's like negative traits just makes it so much more interesting because it makes you easier to be like vulnerable while you're role playing. Mm -hmm. Whereas like D and D has some of the backgrounds and stuff. And those are like interesting because they're like, Oh, you used to be a sailor or used to be a soldier or something. And those are like enough to give you like a little bit of a push, but they don't quite like capture the emotional aspect of your character, which I feel like Shadowrun does actually do pretty well. And I think as like we were talking about all the lore being incredibly detailed and everything, I also think that the character creation is so incredibly detailed that like it gives you so it gives me so many ideas um and then sometimes if i have karma points to spend to you know upgrade my character whatever you can sit there and there's just so much to look through and you can choose to you know give yourself another negative trait or whatever and you can still sort of mess with the system the entire time and suddenly then you have to justify those choices too it's like Mm -hmm. what happened in your story that suddenly made your character now vomit all the time to, i don't know <laughs> to, to piggyback on what Elaine said the the wealth of things to choose from i think partly partly comes from uh like the fact that it's sci-fi and fantasy mm-hmm. which is a mm-hmm. thing that i personally really like when like those genres are blended together like mm-hmm. i like numenera too i like far future things that where it's like oh technology has progressed so much that it's like magic so, like you can make a character that has like incredible fantasy elements and then go ahead and like give them like a little robot that lives in their brain or something. <laughs> and that just like is one way to make things like kind of trite 
tropes fresh again is just by like adding another adjective to that trope that like mm-hmm. doesn't really go with it. I love being able to like mix things like that. And I, I think to the point about, you know, like disadvantages and things, I think that those are always the points where characters come together for me in almost every game that I've played. Once you start picking those negative qualities for your character, I feel like that's when they kind of become a person. I like those. I like having games that have a lot of options for those and that like really integrate that into how you play the game. And like force you to play off of them too, because I think some games you pick them up and then you just never look at them again. And that's always really frustrating to me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think it does make your character more well-rounded and it gives you a lot of depth, just like what you were saying. I agree completely. You add all that depth to Gandalf, but Gandalf (laughs) who has like a keyboard tie. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And And a keyblade. Yeah. And And also he's... um, (laughs) uneducated he's uneducated (laughs) and he's very what does he have distinctive style so he's always noticeable when he walks (laughs) in the room and he's a vampire (laughs) (laughs) so the one negative quality that all of our characters have in Neoscum is uh, distinctive style we all chose it and we talk about it sometimes on the podcast but essentially like the way it reads is like your character looks so like specific that every time you walk in a room everybody notices you and can tell who you are immediately and like we all took it because it was like, oh yeah, we'll take the we'll take the free points for just being looking like cool. All the time. <laughs> because like, <laughs> because like, of course we would too. Yeah. None of our characters are like wearing like uh, nondescript, like inconspicuous, like <laughs> yeah. brown jacket. It's like <laughs> on, no, on top just... of that, I did give myself an invisibility thing because I was like, I'm afraid that this is yeah. going to be like <laughs> this I have is invisibility be a as a spell too. And, so yeah, yeah. you yeah. might as well oh, make yeah, yourself invisible right. but, more often, but you'd be tired. But yeah. Gannon, our GM, told us specifically. He was like, oh, like. And we were making jokes. We're like, it's never affected anything. And he's like, no, I've 100% like affected the way you guys travel through places because everybody knows who you are every time you show up. Yeah, we yeah. have a truck that says our name on it. Yeah. <laughs> Four. Now, well, it's we an S it's now. Yeah. It's very small. But you better believe Neoscom's coming back on that truck oh, as yeah. soon as the yeah. heat is yeah. off. As soon as the heat's off, we're yeah, yeah, painting it back on. Yeah. As soon as we fake our dance. <laughs> <laughs> So was that a uh, like a conscious decision as a group to all take that no. one specific? No, that's phrase? just that's not. just us. No, we all. Oh, just, that's amazing. Yeah, we yeah. all just I guess we're like this sounds great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, what can I? I'm, my guy's gonna look so cool if I give him this thing, and then I have to think of something like really brash for him to look like, and then I, also I, saying distinctive style yeah. just sounds nice. It sounds like you're giving yourself a little compliment. It doesn't like, sound negative like, at all. Honestly, why are you giving me points for this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the idea that somebody would play this game not trying to make a distinctive character honestly just makes me sad. That's the thing I think about like uh black trench coat like that, that truly just like makes me the saddest is like, like, this All is your fun fantasy same, game. Yeah. yeah, it's like in D and D. You're not. Oh, well, I'm. Uh, There's different. But think about different like strokes for different folks. And yeah, and about, some like, of the strokes mm-hmm. are more fun than others. If you've seen Mr. <laughs> Robot at all, that the main character of that show, I feel like is trying very much to blend into the background, and, and yet, is incredibly distinctive. Yeah. Like we're With like the hood wow. on, and like yeah, you're like, like the oh, stare. You do stand out. Uh, Eleni and I were talking about Mr. Robot the other day because uh, you're watching it for the first time, and. Eleni was like, when do these people get their hair cut? Because, like, they always have immaculate <laughs> hair. Such fresh Johnny hair. Mal- his hair is always perfectly quaffed. And I'm like, dude, I, I don't want to spoil been, anything. You've but- been running around doing cyber crimes all the time. Like, where are you going to cut your hair? You've been right. running from the police. I think they cut their hair before they get on set, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you still got it. Distinctive style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about the history of this system. It's been around for a while. I always like to say that this game takes place in the far future of the 80s. Um, The first edition came out in 1989, and then the most recent one is the fifth edition, which was in 2013. So I I guess I don't know if you guys know much. I don't know a whole lot about like how all of the lore happened in between there. I know that there's like novels and there was a card game and like, has the meta plot kept going from first edition all the way to fifth edition? I think so. I think with the the video games and stuff, I think there are like chronological dates or like things, things happened. And I think what they're doing, I hope nobody comes for me for saying this, but. Oh, they will. I think, <laughs> I think. Oh, we make stuff up all the time. Don't worry. About <laughs> it. I, I think that it just keeps getting later 
in like it, it started off there's like 2050 something and like mm-hmm. it's kind of in step maybe not like directly but kind of in step with like reality and like the technical advances they make kind of like mirror the the technical advances like we're making but in like oh, a yeah. very, it's like oh hey all of a sudden uh it's it's uh 2063 and we don't have to use wires anymore yeah uh, yep. we were for a real <laughs> yeah. long time but i mean that's a, <laughs> having like a future oriented game is like yeah when you release your first edition in 1989 you're like oh and what if they have computers that are with them all the time <laughs> <laughs> and they're huge it's <laughs> yeah. huge as and they're, pianos and they're like <laughs> it's like i remember all those like really old Shadowrun commercials where it was like people running around with like keyboards duct taped like, to their arms. Like the Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, like exactly. What's, it was wild is that there is sci-fi, <laughs> yes. like cyberpunk sci-fi in the 80s that is like pretty accurately describing what the future is but Shadowrun just like we're like, you know what? It's gonna be like now but a little more futuristic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just just fucking more orcs future. in there too. And also a dragon was president, so. Yeah. Yes, yes. true. A dragon oh. was president. Yeah. <laughs> Not my yeah, dragon I, president. Yeah, I read a little bit about the lore um, just a couple days ago, and apparently, what, a dragon flew out of Japan or something like that that started all the magic up again or something? Yeah, that sounds right. The Six Awakening or the Six World. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I just remember that the dragon was named Dunkelzon. Huh. He was president, oh, yeah. and he was assassinated. <laughs> Oh, or, was yes, yes. or was he? This or was he? Or was he? We don't know. Oh. Will. Mm-hmm. oh, the AAA corps are vying for dominance over the scraps Dunkles on left behind. <laughs> what happened in Atlantis? Ah, I don't know. <laughs> seems, pr- pl- seems possible. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> yeah, also, the Shadowrun world is canonically flat. <laughs> <laughs> no, <that's it>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <it's> just- <laughs> Look, we uh, we didn't come up with it. <laughs> awesome. Before we get into character creation, let's go over some basic terms and concepts that we may need to actually create characters in this game. So. Yeah. First off, we've got, what, your archetype? Yeah. Um, and kind of like what I was saying earlier, like you can truly customize. So like uh, a lot of the archetypes provided are just sort of like common roles within the lore, I would say. And then also kind of like. The, the way they're written in the handbook is like, or the, is that what that's called? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, mm-hmm. The uh, the roles are kind of like a jumping off point. It's like, oh, here's a type of thing that exists, and here's how you would create something like that. Uh, but stuff like, yeah, you, you've got a few listed here that it's like, face is obviously the like charismatic like person just infiltrating the you know enemy hideout or whatever. Um, then you got deckers who are like the Shadowrun equivalent of like just a hacker. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and I feel like they came up with the word decker before the word hacker was actually like actually like a real word people used all that much. Nineteen eighty nine, maybe sounds right. Because well, when, kinda, when was Hackers the movie out? That was like nineteen ninety three. Yeah. That that was the first uh, movie to use that word. That was before Matt. <laughs> <laughs> that was before Matthew Lillard gained the power of Shaggy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> It, well, in the 1920s, there were people who would say, you're a hack. Or er, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you got you got your your hackers or deckers. Then you have technomancers who are people who I believe like have evolved to access technology without having to like have a device. And, and they're magic users. It, too. It's, yeah, it's like the idea that like as humanity continues to evolve like at some point people will be so digitally native that they will just be able to like log on with their brain and can i say one thing about that that I, just in general that i do th- think is really cool about like the idea of archetypes and everything like that is that there are like every different if if you're like um a magic user or you have a bunch of cybernetics or you're you're this or that like every there are so many different paths to the same kind of effect, you know, like magic can manifest as actual spells. It can manifest as huge, like physical abilities, uh, or it can manifest as like an ability to access the matrix. Like, but those all have equivalents like outside of magic, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was going to say like one of those is like a mage or a wizard, but then you also have adepts that are kind of right. like the Shadowrun version of monks. Mm-hmm. But then you also have things called alchemists, 
who are uh, sort of similar to mage mages, uh, but what they can do is they can imbue physical objects with magic spells. Mm-hmm. So they're like uh, enchanters. Yeah, exactly. But they and like this is one we don't really have in our podcast right now. Although, dude, me too. Um, I'll be your brother. Uh, yeah, we'll be b- brother alchemists. Uh, full metal <laughs> alchemists. Uh, <laughs> it'll be that. It'll literally be that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the cool thing about that is you are you're like you know you can take all the bullets in your gun and essentially put like an ice spell. In them so that every time you fire, if it hits anybody, it does an ice spell in that like surrounding area. Uh, cool. Yeah, there's just a lot of. Also, the I would say like the typical like fighter is replaced with the uh, with the term street samurai, which is sort mm-hmm. of a phrase just used to be like this person fights with guns. Uh, that makes sense. Then we also have riggers who are like kind of like deckers, but they are more um, like vehicle. Like, they, they bond with vehicles and are able to, like, remotely use drones and whatnot. Um, like, in in uh, Neo Scum, my character, like, drives trucks. So a lot of people are like, oh, he's a rigger. But he's actually not. He he doesn't Anti. really do anything with, like, remote. He, yeah, he's against it because he's, like, old school. He just is really good at driving. He's mm-hmm. just, like, a, like a wheel man, uh, which is not an official like Shadowrun class or anything, but like that's the thing is like you can make kind of whatever type of character you want. It doesn't have to fall in these archetypes. Yeah. Do we leave? Oh, there's uh, another type of mage. I think is like sh- shaman. There's like shamanistic, oh, yeah. like pseudo like natural uh, mages yeah. and stuff, and like they do stuff. And it's and we I, ignore that entire. We part. kind of ignore <laughs> that because it, it it kind of borrows a lot from like uh, Native American lore in a way that seems mm-hmm. explo- exploitative. Which is a very very difficult aspect of like Shadowrun's lore. Yeah, part of our mm-hmm. homebrew is ignoring the parts of Shadowrun that we find to be offensive. Yeah, or yeah, problematic. Problematic for like, sure. Like mm-hmm. pre- pregnancy being a, a negative quality. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yes. Ugh. You know what? I I have said this, I think, probably on this show before, too. But, like, I have never been more likely to murder someone than when I was pregnant. And so I feel like that maybe isn't a negative quality in a game like this. Seems reasonable that, like, I would maybe be better at that. Yes. Yeah, agreed. There is a negative trait in uh, Shadowrun called Gremlins, where (laughs) you have, like, technology around you starts to, like go on the fritz and I think oh, yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. here has gremlins because our connection is uh, keeps yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah there we go it's me <laughs> well I think that's all the roles I think mm-hmm. of the yeah, like the, pre- preset concepts of like using or magic or not magic or different like of those specific types of abilities yeah. w- yes which ties yeah. into like essence which is probably something we'll cover but like that's kind of a balancing board between like the, the like magic natural connection and the like uh, technological connection. To mm-hmm. It was also right. kind of mentioned, but uh, how magic can manifest in like a physical thing is like you can be an adept as well. I don't know if the word yeah. adept. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Where or you could have like cybernetic arms and be really strong. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm-hmm. or take like crazy future drugs and be real strong. Like, yeah. Allows for like narrative flexibility with like an archetype. Very cool. Now, what about the meta types? Uh, these are basically like the ancestries or the races. So you've got uh, the main meta types there that are dwarf, elf, human, orc, and troll. And then, and then after that, there are a million more <laughs> meta variants. So yeah. you can you can choose. I mean, you can be a pixie. You can be anything. You, you can, can be make a it snake. up. Well, I feel like yeah. we've made up. Yeah. Some. Oh yeah. We definitely. And you can also sort of take like take one of these and then just kind of combine it with some other things. And it can totally be uh, one of the characters that I made, I made into like a bat person, but it's not, it doesn't originally start as a bat person. It starts as like just a sort of dark elf. And then I gave it's like cybernetic wings. And then I was like, it's a bat. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I was going to say one of the big, like other meta types beyond like those meta variants is there's uh and this is honestly mainly just because we use Hero Lab, so we have like a bunch of different expansions kind of tacked on top of each other. But one that's definitely been used a bunch is the shapeshifter meta type, which is just like any normal meta type, but they also like resemble another, like an animal, and then they also can turn mm. completely into that animal as just well. Just like a wear insert 
type anything. of creature. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. Literally bovine, canine, equine, falconine, lupine, <laughs> pantherine, tigering. Not to get ahead of ourselves, but Lenny and I are going to make a teacup piglet is our character, and I <laughs> yes. don't see a. What would that be, Blair? That, oh, that That'd would be, be... Uh, ursine. Oh, I mean that's a bear. Yeah. Vol- vulpine. Uh, bo- probably no, it's a fox. Yeah, I right. don't think they. I don't bovine. think they. Expect- I think you make a bovine shapeshifter and you and you hack it. That's true. You'd make bovine and you'd be like, okay, this is. Uh, you probably have to make them. <laughs> Make them uh, can a we also officer. make it a pixie? <laughs> can we make it a pixie? Oh no, you can only choose one. Yeah, uh, and then on top of all that, okay, we'll do it. There's <laughs> there's also options to like play as like artificial intelligence. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you Ooh. can you can be like a ghost in the machine, uh, which, which is pretty cool. Is what Mike and I are gonna make. We're gonna make what's the older brother. Uh, Al, uh, Alphonse Elric. Oh yeah, yeah. From uh, <laughs> from, 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 from Al- He's Al- going to be a meta sapient AI, and from he what? will be an alchemist. Yeah, they, they referenced <laughs> an anime earlier oh. in, in which a, a, a boy's like soul inhabits uh. a giant suit of armor. Yes. And I think the the way that Shadowrun explains all the the meta types is that like in 2013, when the dragon flew out and gave everyone magic, people, and when uh, Fifth Edition came out, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, people were quote unquote goblinized where mm-hmm. they just turned into these different like fantasy uh like creatures or whatever and then like also when people are born i believe that they're born like sometimes like they can just randomly you can be a human and randomly give birth to an elf because i i think there's like an element of like the the type of meta type they became was like tied to the, like their blood of like the dying out of all these things and oh, eventually yeah. becoming all humans. It was based on the and idea so, that like, like the whole Tolkien universe was like set in the past or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. all of these like blended in became humans and then the awakening was like all of the everyone's like true bloodlines coming back out. And so that's just like an like genetics like tied to magic like oh wow like can you believe we're we're both, we both have brown hair and our Would our you, baby's blonde and blue eyed like Yeah, it feels pretty problematic. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I <laughs> Kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do I, like that they call it metatype and not race, though. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, because it's effectively, they're all different types of humans. They're still the same species right. yeah. and whatnot, since they all kind of came from the same peoples, I guess you could say. Yeah. yeah. And and also, like, yeah, like, literally, like, tying race into, like, the, the word race is, is something, like, to you know, determine these these different kind of characteristics in a game that's set like in America, yeah, like for real. in the modern times, mm-hmm. it's just like I have to imagine. Like even in 1989, they're like, yo, <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> we can't go on this like, shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and get some games nowadays do not uh, think of that. Yeah, that's I know, true. and it's yeah, yeah it's yeah, no. oh yeah, we got to okay. just destroy half the country, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's next? So we got, uh, what, what is, uh, magic versus resonance? Uh, I guess that is a thing that we probably would need to know about. Uh, yeah. Is that like essence? Yeah. Uh, So, well, no, not quite. Essence is slightly different. Yeah. Cause the essence is like determined by the amount of like augmentations you have. Um, or the, um, so, so I guess we'll just define both, but essence is like the it's like a discrete quantity you have and every time you get a cybernetic implant it decreases your essence which affects your strength at magic it's like your soul it's, yeah it's like mm. your soul but if yeah. you're like an elf you only start with like two essence so really as an elf like you don't you probably don't want to get too many like cybernetic implants or augmentations or whatever because you already start with such a low essence and the essence is important because uh, if you roll badly you can you can use essence to sort of regain certain stats um uh, no, you would use it to do a um, to um, spend an edge. Oh, that's edge. Yeah, that's, that's not edge. essence. So, like, a- a- essence is like a mechanically a, a <laughs> so way to keep resources. them from being like, hey, so uh, this person is a super powerful wizard, but also their body is a giant spider. And it's like, yo, if you want the giant spider body, your wizard is not going to be as good. Yeah. But if you but want you to be a super <laughs> powerful wizard, you basically all you can get away with is a robo hog. Uh, mm-hmm. And, yeah. uh, you know, listen to Neil Scum. Casey, Neil what, Scum what dot- is a robo hog? You yeah. know what? Neoscum.com slash starter. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> speak on that. Yeah, check it out. Um, uh, but yeah, and, and it's it's cool the way that ties. And, and again, that ties back into the the idea of like I can go about. I can have a high essence, um, like physical fighter character who's an adept, 
and who can do all this crazy jumping and, and like climbing and all this stuff. Or I can have like a super low essence, uh, a uh, character who could not possibly do magic. Who has but, jetpacks for life. Yeah, exactly. Who has a bunch of augmentations and can do the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so, like, really, you can, like, you can shape the narrative of, of your character uh, however you want, like, around uh, around the mecha- – you're not locked into, like, uh, mechanical choices by mm-hmm. – by your narrative decisions, which so I, I think do, is really cool. I do want to say then that what I said before, I was talking about edge mm-hmm. completely, not essence at all. Yeah. And so. we'll get to that. I'm sure. But what's the difference between resonant? Um, Casey's never looked at well, the uh, character uh, sheet. No, re- resonance, <laughs> like it says it's magic or resonance. And that is like, uh, magic is actually casting magic resonance would be like an adept you're resonating with the magic you're, of the yeah, world like, or I mean, a technomancer technomancers resonate cool. with yeah. the magic you're so not, magic you is don't active have spells. Use. Yeah. right so it's and like alchemists use magic as well yeah. yeah and and it's just it's a it's a way of uh differentiating sp- yeah differentiating from physical like your magic abilities spells versus your spells and mm-hmm. like uh, magic's use to accomplish something else yeah that's cool. I, I really like the the essence uh, magic versus technology For sort sure. of balance. It, it feels like it, it's a very uh, interesting balance mechanic in the game itself, just so that you're not a super powerful tank that can also sling spells. Yeah, like yeah you can else. break the game so easily. But you also have bad breath as a negative trait. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. yeah, which allows <laughs> you, you down. So yeah. everyone yeah. will yeah. stay away. They won't get close enough for you to do anything. Technology is like your your day job, and then magic is like the podcast you do with your friends in your free time, and never the twain shall meet. They negatively affect each other. And- <laughs> hey, maybe for some of us, magic is... Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> That means you have a high essence. Yes. yes. Uh, Very good. And I think I'm it's learning. Like- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's get into the attributes that the system uses. I'm assuming since it's quite crunchy, there are some attributes that we need to know about. There are yeah. eight attributes, um, and we'll each take two of them. All right. Um, <laughs> the first two are body and agility. So body is like uh, essentially your like physical stamina. Uh, it's often it's used to determine how many hitboxes you have, so like how much damage you can take. And it's also used in any sort of test where it's like you have to withstand you know pressure from this or that. Um, it's very fun to say roll your body. Yeah, roll your body. Roll your body. Uh, if you take damage, you <laughs> roll your body plus your armor uh, stat. So that's cool. And then agility. Oh. Agility, classic. You know, it's in every it's in every game. The hits, right? the hits. Agility, quickness. You roll it for aiming stuff. You roll it for a lot of different stuff. Honestly, agility is probably. I'd say body. You probably could take her, take her leave. Agility. I would say almost every character has pretty decent agility, except for Casey's. <laughs> yeah, but you know, <laughs> the next two are uh, reaction and strength. Reaction uh, plays into your initiative. Um, reaction is like. Ooh, the bomb goes off. You don't have time. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like reaction is your ability to react. All right, next one. Well, uh, also the reaction and intuition are, are what you use to defend every attack towards you as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your ability to uh, – intuition is like seeing it for like seeing it before it hits and then reaction is uh, being enough. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's like, kind of cool. Intuition yeah. is like your court vision when you play basketball. Like you know – yeah. what the play is supposed to do. Reaction is like... Or physical like ability. Being able to get to where you need to go on the floor to defend uh, Kevin Durant. Yeah. Um, and then strength is... Let's be real, guys. Strength is, uh, is just being able to carry lots of stuff, being able to punch a guy super hard. Ooh, pop a pimple that be- nobody else could get. Yeah, <laughs> being able to <laughs> pop a really hard pimple. Huge pimple. The core, yeah. just a, an inch deep. Pop oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a, a pimple popping <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the bus man. This Guys, is the sorry bus robot. This. Uh, on our podcast, bus we've uh, instigated... Uh, We've it's banned. We it's can't banned. talk about it. We can't it. talk no, about it, so talk we're about talking it. about it on yours. Melanie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, willpower and logic are the next two. Willpower, well, 
Casey, do you use that one? <laughs> yeah, willpower ties into like magic yeah, stuff. Yeah, so oh, Casey, most of us, but also resistances against like mental against effects. magic. Like also, yeah, if or, someone's messing with you, yes, yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever used willpower because I don't need it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, none. She just falls yeah. over it. No self control. She, she whatsoever. just like you know what. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> just, uh, and logic, that's something for smart people. You also use that for <laughs> hacking, too. Uh, we gave, we gave <laughs> Lenny, too, that I think her character has the I've lowest. I've never yeah. used yeah. these that's, two ever. I mean, I know, uh, you know, willpower, also, you know what willpower means, presumably. Uh-huh. And uh, logic, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I also presume you know what that means. So, uh, yeah, logic <laughs> is used for hacking also any sort of like problem solving and or like willpower or is used for <laughs> magic macking and macking yeah kisses <laughs> lots of kisses uh, yeah. <laughs> all right casey bring us home oh intuition and charisma intuition obviously like yeah ties uh uh into um every defensive role you make uh uh does intuition still tie into initiative? Is that one of the uh-huh. factors? Yeah. Yeah, so that also ties into your initiative role. Um, intuition, I feel like, at it's least in our perception. show. What's that? It's also your perception. That. Oh, yeah, yeah. So so a lot of these stats, like, you, you, can, obviously, you can use them raw if you don't have uh, a specific uh, skill in something. Or you can just add them together with your skill if you do. Uh, but... Um, uh, I, I think our show probably outside of the very mechanical aspects of like reaction, intuition, certain things like that, which seem to, that they would maybe play more uh, of a role in like a narrative sense. We kind of just play out, you know, so I feel mm-hmm. like like intuition. I mean, our most intuitive character would be Pox because she has an ability uh, yeah, she has like a sort of a magical or resonant ability ooh. to uh, sense danger, which is like you know not even. I mean, like I'm sure that which ties just in manifests with intuition, as but, like tummy ache, yeah, or something. Yeah, and being like uh, Pox doesn't feel so great. And then I say, like, oh, oh yeah. no, I don't go, feel good. And then go. they're like, oh, she doesn't feel good. Uh-oh. Or even better, he'll go like, uh, uh, he'll go, um, Pox. Uh, 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 Roll, roll, uh, your, roll for intuition yeah. or whatever. And, yeah, and, and like, like she'll roll like, it, and then she'll get like a low roll, and he'll be like, "Yeah, nothing." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like, like, Casey, Casey's like about to open a box, and he's like, "Uh, yeah. uh okay." <laughs> I'm not gonna do anything now. My willpower is to just lay down on the ground. Yeah, uh, and then the last one is is charisma, which uh, uh, it, t- it ties into like uh, certain actual you know mechanical skills, but a lot of times that charisma also does feel like a Role playing uh, skill, which is typical, I think, of of you know most role playing games, like something like charisma would be. But again, we play that stuff on mic. Like we, if we need to convince Ganon of something, if we need to intimidate like an NPC, we, we just we intimidate to, or convince Ganon, right? And like we have to do it. Like, <laughs> like in certain cases, Ganon will Ganon will roll, but like the it's. It, in almost every case, it's like we are just playing the actual scene, so we're not using that as much in our show. But if you, but if we did, we would probably not, do better. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> in my in my writing class, I took uh, we talked a lot about the difference between like scene and summary, and I feel like if we were just a summary podcast, we'd probably just be like making roles and be like, all right, I intimidated them for this. Uh, but unfortunately we have to use scene a lot. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, I would love to just depend on my uh, stellar attributes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I see, I see a lot of uh, other attributes listed on the, the main character sheet. Oh um, yeah. Are those secondary attributes then? My what? God, there are so many insane. Th- <laughs> like we could go through all of these, Attributes? but it would take us forever. Essence, um, initiative, edge. Some of these are like uh, oh, these. have to do with the other attributes like there there's like an equation that goes into them other, so yeah initiative is literally your reaction plus your intuition yeah like land movement is probably linked <laughs> to like um but yeah we can we can just ignore those right wow. those will be also i mean a lot of these will be determined by your meta type but especially your edge and your essence will be interesting specifically tied to your meta type so yeah. whatever whatever type you choose to be you'll have different edge that you start with and different essence. And then you might choose some abilities later on that might affect those, or it might not. They might say the same. And yeah. the balance of that is like, for instance, she said like elves have lower edge. 
Uh, and that's Only because two like, edge. right. And as like elves, six. elves have like nat like naturally as a, like a meta type have like night sight and in different like senses that humans don't have. So humans, and this is like the same thing. They have this in, in other games in, in different ways, but edge itself is a, a uh, fairly unique and at least the way it ties in mechanically and just that like edge is like a stroke of luck and yeah, you basically the yeah you, the x factor you ch I, you choose to spend it to like re you can do a bunch of different stuff with edge but you have a limited pool and it takes a while to like refill i read a cyberpunk book recently i think it was a william gibson Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you mentioned Is it this. Count Zero? Yes, yeah. yeah. And in Count Zero, they have like one of the characters who's like a mercenary uh, talks about when he's on missions, he's like riding the edge. He is like, it's the edge is like, uh, like being battle ready at all times, like being calm and like a disaster. And the fact that William Gibson literally called that edge and then like that was that's a mechanic in Shadowrun I'm like yeah. which which came first like I'm pretty sure William Gibson didn't steal from Shadowrun because he freaking Super hates, hates it. it dude uh, Super hates it Yeah <laughs> So like maybe edge is just like a thriller slash cyber yeah. term Well yeah that's what that attribute is I feel like that's a, and that's honestly like um that's huge I the edge affects outcomes and like, I feel like more than a number of, of actual attributes, uh, at least in, in our story, because I mean, like, well, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the thing about the edge rolling, what, what do you roll for? Mm -hmm. When do we spend an edge? Oh, mm -hmm. when you spend edge. My God, like um, my character can like, can like never spend edge because I already have such a low edge that it's like. I'm not going to risk my very little edge that I have to. But the drama of like you yeah, using but an I edge. Yeah, but I know. But then like it's like I could use it for other things that are more important later than yeah. spending it on and that. Or what if I'm going to die? Like there's, your edge can kill you, right? If there, I go down to zero? There's a difference. No. no. Oh, no. No, no, no. There's a difference between spending an edge and burning an edge. <laughs> uh, in Shadowrun, you can spend an edge to re-roll misses on something and then – if they are sixes, then you can re-roll the sixes again. It's yeah. called like flaming sixes or something. I think it's Explodings. like explosion. Yeah, yeah roll, roll of sixes. Or you can burn an edge where you permanently get rid of that like luck point, and you do that to get an automatic four hit. <laughs> there yeah, are, to so be like, oh, wow. like we said, there are a ton of super crunchy rules of wow. Shadowrun. Yes. But I was thinking maybe we could move on to qualities. Yeah. Yes. I will say, a Tech Wizard saved his life because burning an edge, you can do a lot of stuff. My character would have died if I didn't permanently burn an edge. Yeah. And that's the that's a kind of cool thing. You're like, okay, wait, halt. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. It's like a last, last ditch attempt mm -hmm. kind of thing. Very cool. All right. That, yeah, you mentioned it just before. Uh, what about qualities? So this is what we were talking about earlier with positive and negative qualities uh, based on how you uh, pick your – and I guess we'll talk about this when we actually create characters. But you'll have priorities and that will kind of determine how much leftover karma you have. And you can either buy positive qualities or uh, take on negative qualities to get more karma to spend on other stuff. There okay. is I think a maximum though that you can do of negative qualities and yeah. there's like a – you, there's a way you can override that and just keep adding negative qualities, but then it becomes a situation where you're like maxing out your character in a way that's not fair. So you can only regain yourself so much karma by like taking on negative qualities. And when you're creating, like there's a, a lot of restrictions, which is typical of role playing games of like how much can you do during the character creation versus like after. Um, yeah. Even if you have leftover sure. points in karma, like they just kind of get like pooled after if, if you can't even them out. Yeah. Well, yeah. At some point, if you add too many negative qualities, you have like an entirely unplayable character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's sort of like they're they're there to be a storytelling component. So if you get too many of them, you're sort of like you're losing that aspect of it. So yeah, sense. it's sort of like in like an improv scene. You want like your initiation or whatever to be relatively like understandable so you can like have a scene happen. Yeah. You're not like front loading it to be like, my character is 20 feet tall. He's a fish. He has a banana nose and <laughs> is skate, he's a skateboard. It's like, <laughs> those are all positive qualities. <laughs> that's, that's too many things going on. Um, yeah, and then the last one you guys have on here is uh, skills, which is just like everything you know how to do as mm -hmm. a character. Um, and there are so many skills in this game. <laughs> there really are. Yes. Oh, so it's a, it's a product of its time, effectively. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. It has, and they have skills, and like when you're, uh, uh, when you're like 
you know, purchasing skills with like your, your points, which again, all that's determined by priority, uh, which is like one of the most complicated aspects at the beginning. But uh, you can, in certain cases, by like you have uh, like group skills and like group skill points that are separate. Uh, which mean like, okay, this is like an athletics group, which means like gymnastics, running and jumping would all level up together with a separate like pool of points when I'm like which making my sense. character, which is yeah. great. Yeah. But the problem with that is like, you can't, you can't break that in and like add like more points on top of it. Uh, you can, yeah, you, you can. can, well you can, but then but you, you have, can. but you can't go back to using group points again. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. Uh, it, so that that's the way like these two different pools of points can't just be like totally abused. Yeah, <laughs> just to like give you guys uh, perspective on like what these skills do, it's like every skill has a corresponding attribute. So anytime you're doing a skill check, you're going to roll your stat in the skill plus whatever that corresponding attribute is, and that will make up your dice pool. And so when you and then whenever you're rolling for success, like Eleni was saying much earlier, was you like roll them, and then depending on how many fives or sixes you get, that's like net success in that mm. trial very cool yeah and uh before we get on to characters i know you, uh, you mentioned uh multiple times this concept of karma um and for those not familiar with the system at all uh could you explain a little bit of what karma is yeah so karma is in sort of it, it can be used as like experience karma is also what you spend to get certain skills right i, I would yeah. call karma like the uh like single unifying like currency of the shadow run like progression system because you can also exchange karma for money um mm. it, it's essentially like right right you, or like you'll get an amount of karma to begin with when you first create a character and then when you do missions and stuff you'll receive karma as experience but you can also like exchange it for different types of things. Yeah, or you, if you take a negative trait, then you get karma for, it like equals it out, and then you, like Blair was saying, mm. spend it on different aspects of your character. Because you're not leveling up traditionally. Yeah. You're just uh, accumulating like karma, which you do with as you will. Like, so your character hypothetically could just hoard a bunch of karma because you know there's something that costs like so much. Uh, and, and things cost, I, I think cost less less during character creation yeah, uh -huh. than they do after. It costs twice as much right. outside oh, wow. of character creation. So there might be like some crazy thing that you're like, I've got my eye on that. So my character is going to stay like like weak and the same for so long. And, and it's just, it's a cool quality like that. You're like holding off quote unquote a level or yeah. whatever. The basic idea is that you're creating a pretty like full fledged character from the start, which is why everything's pretty cheap. And then the idea is like your characters can learn new things, but it takes effort to do so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It, it feels a lot like like L5R fourth edition character creation, where you get a pool of experience points at the beginning, you're able to spend those experience on various uh, qualities in that system. It's it's advantages and disadvantages, um, and then you get points back for taking certain advantage or disadvantages, and then you can spend them on other advantages. So that's th that'll be uh, pretty interesting to to see how it compares uh, to that system. Yeah, that sounds um, similar. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm not completely lost. <laughs> no, no. No, you're not. Um, funnily enough, this is one of like the three games that I played before we started this show. Is it uh -huh. true? Oh, very cool. I, hope I played Shadowrun, I played L5R, and I played D&D. &D. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you're an expert. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, with all of that uh, explanation out of the way, how about we make some people? Oh, cool. uh, yeah. Let's make some people. Um, so I guess this is probably the time in which we should talk about priority. So uh, the way Shadowrun works is you essentially have five basic, like, buckets. And uh, to make a character, you're going to essentially prioritize five aspects of your character. So like we talked about, uh, the, the five things that you can prioritize are meta type, attributes, magic or resonance, skills, and resources. So depending on what kind of character you want to make, you just have to like place your abilities correspondingly. So like if you want to make a very like, like physically or mentally strong character who isn't necessarily good at skills, you'd put attributes higher. Or if you just want them to have a ton of different things that they know how to do, you could put skills higher. Um, and then obviously, uh, if you want a more complicated, like cool meta type, you would have to put meta type higher up on the thing. Because if you put it too far down, you're not able to pick some of the more complicated. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, there is so much go that goes into this. Yeah, for real. Um, 
So if you want, you guys can kind of tell us what kind of characters you're trying to make. I have a character that I, I got floating around my head. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I've had this idea uh, before I was thinking about a, a character who was a like a that grown baby uh, who was genetically modified based off of DNA that they they got off of a uh, like the crucifix that Jesus <laughs> was, uh, was crucified on and he was he was uh, genetically modified by like a corporation that was seeking to like kind of clone Jesus um <laughs> But, like, obviously after he was born, you know, there was, like, divine intervention or something. And he, like, <laughs> fell out of the hands of this corporation and just grew up without really knowing his background and knowing that he was created in a lab to be, a rep, like, a clone of Jesus. So he's just this guy that looks like Jesus and has, like, strange mystical adept powers <laughs> um, and has fallen into a life of shadow running without knowing why he's, like, got so much why it seems that like luck is always on his side and why he can like perform these like minor miracles in a world where, you um, know, everyone can do magic and mm -hmm. perform miracles. That sounds great. Uh, so what would we do to like make a character like that? So <laughs> real quick, is there a, like an angel like metatype or something? Let's check it out. Probably not, right? <laughs> I don't think we got angel. I'm thinking he's probably human with a ton of edge, right? Yeah. Human with a ton of edge, um, maybe with some sort of adept. I think it would be almost funny if he had the maximum amount of edge that he could possibly have. Cool. I think that's funny, and I think that's cool. Oh, well, there goes my character concept. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we actually can only get seven edge? We've already run into a wall. You can, uh, yeah, we'll is that take even... a quality, and we'll, and we'll agree. We'll... Yeah, there's a... It's can... like apt. Uh... No, it's not attribute. So... I think there's a lucky one. Lucky, yeah. Lucky is a is a. Ooh, it's it's got tw it costs twelve. Dice nice roll and coin characters qualities not increased. Oh, okay. So we add this. Can we just talk about how Jesus was not like historically lucky at all? No, he's like this person is good at coin flips. It's like oh yeah, in the Bible they talk about how Jesus flipped the go the silver coins that Judas got for betraying him, and they landed tails every time. <laughs> All right, uh, so we added Lucky as a yeah, positive quality, so. and now let's go ahead and add a an, um Might have... Maybe dead emotion. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're making a teacup pig over here. On teacup let's, talk, pig. let's talk about that while we look up some uh, So qualities. we're choosing the meta type of pixie. We'd, we'd, we'd uh, talked even on mic earlier po about possibly like, oh, bovine shapeshifter, and just ma make it like never sh shift into a human. But uh, we're just going to say that Pixie, because a Pixie is so small um, and it has wings, this Pixie just looks like a pig. And it, and also, like, if you want to, like, make something that's straight up not in the game and you want it to be a pig. That's what we're doing. Find find something applicable. You don't it's even a, have to justify it. It's, it's your Shadowrun, you know? We know it's a pig and that's all that matters. You just use the stats for something else. So it's a Pixie. That's what we chose. That gives us four edge. I want to make this the most... Piglet, piglet, there's ever been. Like I look, I'm not gonna be like, oh, this. This pixie can access the internet with its mind. It's it's like no, this like this piglet is just like yo, give me some food. Like it can understand several languages is what I'm thinking. It's like very intelligent, but it can't do anything with it because it doesn't have, uh, you know, opposable thumbs. No, uh, we're giving it no magic. No magic, dev like I think. Do we? Uh, None. It's oh, just I, no I just, magic. Okay, I see. Sorry. It's not a magic user. We're going to oh, make we it are incredibly using... charismatic, though. Yeah, but Eight people just... charisma. People just... They just love this. Strength one. <laughs> reaction. Eh, it'll be slow. Let's give it a slow I reaction. mean, like, a, I feel like a mid... Like, a, a three is fine because it would be kind of like a nervous, like a little piglet. You know, here's something. <laughs> uh, uh, body would be low, but... Um, yeah, body is willpower, one. Willpower... Dude, this piglet, it's its running around in this corporate world like... Uh, Willpower 7. We're going to make this piglet uh, very strong. Logic? Let's make it very smart as well. All right. Let's see how smart we can make it. Meanwhile... Guess, yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us about it. Yeah. Over here... Right, so we're on our G figure character. By the way, I, I already know their name. Their name is Saint. 
Uh, Love it. And let's see. So we've made them. Their primary meta type is human because they get a lot of attribute points, which we spent on edge and magic. Spoiler alert. Our secondary uh, priority is magic. And we've made them a mystic adept. uh, So they like are able to do magic intuitively. Uh, Yeah. So what a mystic adept is, is you not only are an adept, but you can also use magic. Uh, like mm-hmm. a mage might. Kind of like a sorcerer in some uh, like works of fiction where they're like, the magic flows through them. They don't have to like read books about it. Um, we also gave uh, Saint the positive quality, Lucky, and then the negative quality, Hobo with a Shotgun, uh, which is like, uh, the reason it's a negative quality, it's, it's because your person cannot possibly be like, they can't stay anywhere fancy. They like have to sleep on the street at all times. Because <laughs> um, I'm assuming Saint came up from like, yeah, nothing. yeah, and also in a in a way like he's humble. Yeah, he has a humble beginning. It's yeah. kind of what we're going for. Yeah. Um, and we also uh, gave us specifically for our magic. We use Christian. Uh, oh yeah, his magic is inspired by Christianity, <laughs> which is a thing that we can do. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, Interesting. Cool spellcasting. Ooh, what about summoning? Can we summon the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, now we're going through and picking out some magic skills. Uh, are, are you guys making characters too? We have no idea what we're doing. Oh, so what <laughs> oh, that, we that's make? actually just right. Then you are doing perfectly. And by the way, so, we're only able to do this because we're using here a lot. Lab. That's why exactly. we're able to be like, wow, so, we can make a character. So basically, the point of uh, character creation cast is to teach our audience how to create characters <laughs> oh, oh, well, in that, this game. Uh, you came to the wrong. Game. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so kidding. starting with not using Hero Lab is, Go by Hero I will Lab. say, going to be quite a challenge uh-huh. um it's not an unmeetable challenge but i did mention earlier that like i made my character and i made it so wrong once i did plug it into hero lab and i'm not trying to sell you hero lab by any means but i'm saying if you are really passionate about playing shadow run it yeah. will make your life a lot easier than um even the I, book <laughs> i will say i will yeah. say honestly even i'm not sure if there's a trial for hero lab but there is. Uh, if there is, literally just using it to make your character. Uh, and that's, it, it, yeah, it, and, and, yeah. Uh, I think the demo allows you to create a character, but you can't go into progression mode. So, yeah, and then not you a bad can. Idea. The progression isn't that bad. It, it's the creation that's so difficult. And honestly, the only reason we're like Hero Lab, Hero Lab, obviously, we had them as a sponsor for a while, but this isn't sponsorship. It, there's nobody else. Like, there isn't a D&D Beyond equivalent. They are the only people who are like, yo, like, uh, Shadowrun is is impossible without mm-hmm. this. Uh, and, and so, yeah. Well, I, I, and I, clearly I, it's not. Lots of people do it without it. So yeah. There's yeah. also online resources. I've never too. done it without any kind of, like, program or anything, though. It's so tough to yeah. do. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't remember. Because I played 4th Edition, but I don't remember what we used, uh, but it was some kind of program or the something. The other thing yeah, go ahead. I was going to say there's also another program that I know is free called Chummer. Chummer. Um, and that is uh, another way to like create a character. I, I don't think it has quite. The nice thing about Hero Lab is that it literally has all of the books in it, mm-hmm. which is the big. I mean, like just being able to be like, what kind of gun do you want? And then just seeing all the guns that your character can equip all in one list. Right. So the other option is um, if you have access to the Internet. There are probably plenty of spreadsheets also that other people have made Mm -hmm. um, that will help to make things easier that include that will inevitably include formulas because the amount of math that ends up happening is a lot. (laughs) Yeah, Um, Yeah. Yeah. it's insane. Once you change one stat of one thing, it will affect like three other stats and you won't even realize it. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, oh, why does this suddenly not add up? And it's because you didn't realize that, oh, when you added X thing, now suddenly you have to lower your strength and you have to lower your blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't tell you that in a clear cut way in the books. It'll like, and a lot of what the book does specifically is it will it'll have like multiple sections for everything and it never lays out like every element in one place. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly, it it feels like you are piecing together uh, the, like 
the actual aspects of like the mechanics of this game and the mechanics of of uh, creating a character in this game from like little puzzle pieces. Yeah. You know, it's like oh, like I remember for magic, learning how to do magic. It was like you would go to the magic index and it would have all this information except for what, like this one essential element. I don't even remember because now mm-hmm. it's just automated. Uh, that and we'd have to go like way to another section of the book. And it's like, no, just put that together. Like, what are you doing? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I was also anyway. going to say, if you can, uh, the PDF is super useful instead of the actual, like, physical book because then you can actually, like, you know, control search F. Search and stuff, yeah. Find stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Ryan, do you remember when we were doing Deadlands and, like, it didn't even tell you anywhere in the yep. book how many spells you could have? Mm-hmm. And we searched through, like, four different books and then it referenced a page that, like, wasn't even in that book or something oh like that. God. It was, yeah, it, was so it was awful. It was awful. And it awesome. feels like the same thing here. Yeah, yeah. totally. I, I feel like I remember, you know, when we were just talking earlier about the, the priorities and the A, B, C, D, E, the, which is basically what it says is the first step of is deciding your, like, uh, your priorities. What, what do you have most of? Do you mostly have money? Do you mostly have whatever? And even huh. doing that first step initially took me so long. Yeah. I was just yeah. like, what is right. going on? I think I, I was going to say Shadowrun's a game that really benefits from coming in with like a pretty clear idea of what you want to do. It's, yeah. it's, I think D&D allows you to kind of like read through everything and be like, oh, I'm going to be a cleric and then I'll like specialize on this thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas like Shadowrun really does, it's going to be a lot easier to do it if you like, you're like, I want to be a street samurai. I want to be really strong, but I also want to be dumb. Or and so yeah. then you can go in yeah. and you can be like, okay, cool. So I'm going to put attributes pretty high. I'm going to put skills pretty low. I don't need magic. So I'm going to put that pretty low. And then resources is going to be pretty high. So I can like deck my guy out with a bunch of like armor and weapons and mm-hmm. stuff. or just find to find a model. You yeah, know, like in, that's a lot of like in the book, they have a lot of models, too. Yeah, I will say yeah. they do have a ton or, uh, of example characters. Oh, I'm kind of like home bake. Yes, that, too. I meant a model as in like uh, 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 like a, a real life person or a, a fictional character that you'd, oh, you yeah. just try to like build out your own version. That's mm-hmm. I'm confused already at the beginning on these priorities. I don't understand. So, so uh, do you do one of you guys just want to give us like kind of what your idea would be of uh of like a character you'd want to make? Well, I have an idea. Um, okay. I'm not sure about Amelia yet. You can go for it, Ryan. Oh, sure. Um, so my character is, uh, speaking of models, inspired by one of my favorite characters from the Genesis version of Shadowrun. Mm. So uh, this character was a runner that you could hire, and uh, she was an elf decker. Um, so, uh, first question is, does your character have a name? Not yet. Okay. We'll put Elf Decker down. For you. That works. Um, cool. So, um, like as a Decker, um, the first question is while you're doing this priority table, there's some easy ones you can probably knock out. Um, yeah. the first big question is, do you want to have any magical ability at all? I don't think so. I mean, the, the techno mage, uh, sounded really interesting, Um, But I think I want to go full uh, cybernetic hacking capabilities and whatnot. Cool. So in that case, what we would probably do is take your magic or resonance and put that in priority E so that it is the lowest of all of them. That makes sense. Uh, I think there's a meta type. I think if you want to be an elf, you have to be like a D or higher. Yes. Now, yeah. what, do the, what do the parentheses mean by the meta types here? Because, like, priority A elf is elf parentheses eight. Yeah, so that just means uh, that refers to how many special attributes you get. And so special attributes are edge or magic. Um, and so you sort of pick between those two. Um, and the idea is the higher up you place your meta type, the more edge you might have. In your particular case, you, you're, we're just talking about how much edge you have. And again, edge is that like X factor that allows yeah. you to kind of bend the rules a little bit. Interesting. So at, at meta type D, which is probably would be a good one for you to take because you're going to want money for your computer. You're going to want skills for your hacking and you're going to want well, attributes are just good to have as well. Uh, at level D, you get zero 
uh, bonuses to your edge or magic. So you would just have one edge, which I think is what Eleni's character Pox has. Two. You have two. Okay. Yeah. I also wouldn't say that you necessarily like have to do it that way either. This is definitely yeah. more like the customization aspect. Like, do you want your person to be lucky or rich or skilled or strong? Yeah. Right. I think that when I was making my character, I probably tried to have as much edge as possible and the max ended up being two. So you never know. I mean, it could end up being more. Yeah. Because it, it looks like I could choose Metatype as my priority A, and if as an elf, I would start with eight. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think two is probably maybe priority C. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, priority uh, C, elf is three. Oh, is that priority? Um, and then D, elf is zero. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, might, if you want to make a choice on how we want to organize that, we can just pl- plunk that in. It That's interesting. Something that happened along the way that I don't remember. Because it, it looks like, okay, so magic, we have to choose the five rankings, like what's the highest priority in this person's life. Um, I'm assuming that good hacking gear is important. Yeah. But so is good skills. Yeah. yeah. But so is good att- attributes. Yeah. And having a good edge is pretty decent too, right? Yeah, so, you know, they're all, like, good things, and you can build a character <laughs> around any of them. Yeah. Um, but what is nice is that because we know magic or resonance isn't something you care about, you're, like, automatically, all of your other stuff's going to be bumped up without really losing anything from the exactly. you're making. You do have to kind of, like, because that's, that's what can be tough. You're like, I don't know what all of these different things mean, so I'm not sure what I want to prioritize because I don't yeah. know the mechanics of the game yeah. work. And but I'd you say- can kind of, like, chop off. Like, go from the bottom. Like, what do you absolutely not need? What could you maybe, you know? Yeah, I, I also think you can just kind of, like, make a sort of like a uh, like a gut decision and then yeah. build sort of around whatever you've chosen. And we can okay. always tweak it later, too. I'm I'm thinking resources. I'll go B, priority B, so 275,000 Nuyen. Okay, pretty good. Pretty solid. And uh, Nuyen is the uh, currency for Shadowrun, for those not familiar. Yep. We say dollars like every episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I say, say it's cr- just like the way you say bucks. You know, we say yeah. bucks. It's the same. It's like, yeah, there used to be dollars, so we say dollars. And I yeah. am so I am so conditioned by the video games. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, so if I have uh, my priority B and E set, now I have to figure out A, C, and D. Um, it, it's hard to say because, like, okay, skills and attributes. Attributes, I'll be missing eight attributes between A and C. Yeah. That seems so, significant. Yeah, so it, it, I think that kind of depends on... So all of this now is just sort of, especially with attributes and skills, it's like how well-rounded do you want to be? Do you yeah. want to be like really good at one thing or do you want to be like kind of good at everything? That makes sense. And then skills is... Uh, Skills is actually the the same in that case because it's going to be like, you know, do you want to be really good at a couple types of hacking or do you want to be like really good at a bunch of different types of hacking? Right. And I mean, so you can be like a little bit good at a lot of things or really good at a few. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really good at that. Do we need to get that for Amelia's connection? Come on now. (laughs) I know, right? Um, I think then I will go with my meta type as D. Cool. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to swap that. Okay. Meta type C, elf three, cool. and then attributes D, 14 instead of 16. Um, and then my skills A. Cool. 46 cool. slash 10. So what does that mean? I've got 46 on the first, and then it says slash 10. Yeah. So that's what Casey was talking about earlier with group points. So once we actually get to picking out your skills, which we can actually do right now, um, you have... Uh, you essentially can choose 10 group points. And what group points do is they essentially get you three skills in one for every point you spend in that group. Oh, wow. Um, And those can be like, there's like a close combat group. Uh, Oh, I I was just going to say like, let's just go to the ones he's probably going to grab. Okay. Okay. So for technical skills, there's biotech, cracking, electronics. And so just to give you an idea of what those include, so like cracking group includes cyber combat, electronic warfare, and hacking. So if you increase this group by, you know, five points, you're going to get a five uh, active skill points in all three of those different ones. Oh, wow. But but also like even as a, a decker, I feel like spending group points is an easy way to get a little good in like some basic things that 
you'll need to do in your like flesh space. Like it, it's a way where you can spend, you have 46 skill points to spend in, on individual things. Mm -hmm. So if you just want to be good at like, Oh, I went camping a lot as a kid. So I can handle myself in the wilderness doing these like three different activities. Right. I can, you can cover your ass with those skill groups. That makes sense. Okay. Well, let's set aside the skills for a little bit later because I'm not exactly sure how I want to go about those. Yeah. You also, uh, since you picked skills first, you, like, 46 is so many. Yeah. You're going to be picking skills, uh, <laughs> like, for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, I should swap skills and attributes. Um, <laughs> speaking of attributes, uh, the so the big attributes for you are probably, it kind of depends on how much, like, physical fighting you're expecting to do, but... Um, with uh, with decking, you, you probably want to have, like, as close to max in your logic stat as possible. Yeah, yeah because I, I picture this person as somebody that basically lives in, in the Matrix, effectively. Cool. Yeah, so uh, the way the attributes work in Shadowrun is you can max out one skill, uh, and then the rest of them have to be one below whatever the max is. And your meta type has a specific max for each individual I didn't know attribute. that. That's cool. Yeah. So what, um, it, what, what is the max then for an elf? Uh, so max logic is six. Um, oh, but I see it. But your other attributes are uh, different depending on your meta type. Oh, okay. So I see this uh, mental and physical attributes meta type attribute table. Gosh, this is crunchy. Yeah, mm -hmm. for real. Okay, so I see it's a, uh, a number on the left is like one for body slash six. I'm assuming that you start with one and the max is six. Uh-huh. And that is that always the case? Like you can't get above that naturally or? You uh, can, right? Uh, so the max, so again, you can only have one skill that's at the max um, and everything else has to be one below the max, but you can also take positive qualities either past your max or have a second skill that goes up to its max. Or oh, you can be like okay. bioengineered yeah. to have, or oh. like, yeah. So yeah. you can enhance them effectively. Yeah. You can get okay. like impl implants that would essentially give you additional stats that would push it above your max. Real okay. KSX style. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's good that we are just focusing on one, actually, because yeah. it, and I will say Blair, bless you, Blair, bless because you Blair, Blair uh, certainly helped me when it came to um, actually figuring out the logistics of my character. It is very difficult. Yeah. I've said it a hundred times. Blair, I say it 20 Blair does use more. his science background in having a basic understanding of Shadowrun. Really, honestly, so, so shallow of an understanding, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, and yet still, like, just a mountain above us. <laughs> yeah, a think, mountain above us who are just like, help me. I think in, in the video game Deus Ex, which is a cyberpunk video game, I think mm -hmm. one of the characters, like, has, like, this quote, which is I, an iconic meme from the Deus Ex series, which is just, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is me <laughs> playing uh, Shadowrun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask for these rules. <laughs> I, I can see, uh, because coming from the 90s uh, role playing, I started role playing in 93, mm -hmm. and Heroes Unlimited was my first game, and that's pretty crunchy. This seems extra crunchy on top of that, but like it looks, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's triggering that, that uh, wonderful crunch factor, like pleasure center in my brain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all, all a, the, all uh, the uh, options. Yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, like, I think that's also what you're speaking of is why people dig it so much yeah. and like love all the different rules that are set for actions as well. And like yeah. when you're actually playing the game, that that's a thing that like clearly there is. It's like inventory management games or whatever, mm -hmm. where I'm just like, yep, I'd love to sort all these things into different it, boxes. Sounds great. <laughs> it's cool, too. I, I think that I was just playing this game. Uh, I got very quickly addicted to this game called Grim Dawn. It's a video game. And it was because, like, there's so many things that you can put points in. And it's like no two shadow runners are going to be alike because of all these options. So you can really feel like you're having a unique individual experience that's, like, just contained to your playthrough. Uh, exactly. Which feels good. So here's a question, Ryan. Since they're kind of building characters in groups, do you and I want to build a character together? Yeah. I think that would be a good idea. I think that that is probably best for everyone's um, 
stamina there. <laughs> <laughs> As if we just group and we build like three. Yeah, if that's good with all of you. Uh, sure. Do you want to... Uh, well, uh, Amelia and I will work on this character. We'll talk through all of the steps for this character. And then conceptually and through uh, the magic of a hero lab, uh, all of you will be able to work on uh, two characters between the pairs. Sure. Sounds good. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the products can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent. Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chain and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming, genre, and representation with their guests, and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved Airhorn app.